friends not doing a lot today it's cold but I'm gonna try a little bit of tinkering around with my toolbox until I come up with something better to keep me busy I wasn't real sure that this tank was empty yesterday it was acting funny and I'm not real sure that something wasn't wrong with this torch so we got a new one it's a small one we'll know in a minute this one probably is an empty tank but we're gonna see if we can get a little more gas out of it they don't even want to screw on I guess you got to push down on it no by George that lit up pretty good maybe there was something wrong with that torch I tried sanding this stuff yesterday and it was just blowing on me like nobody's business. You'd have to have some kind of space suit on to keep from getting it up your nose and everywhere else sanding that stuff. Okay, my torch appears to be working better in an upright position than it was tilted down. I had a whole lot of experience with little propane torches. And by Jove, there's a knack to this. You gotta get it at the right time. I thought it would stay melted, but it dries back hard again. Not only was I wasting a lot of gas, it wasn't doing very good. Got the top of the lid done, the green part scraped off anyway. The yellow ain't coming off so good. I got some of the yellow off. I'm definitely gonna have to wind up sanding it too. Now this old box is years and years on the railroad. It's got more dents in it than you can shake any stick in. Every one of them dents is gonna show when I paint it, but I don't care. I'll take a hammer and do my darndest to straighten it some, but it ain't ever gonna look new. This box has got a lot of history behind it. I can't tell how many times I threw an old ABD service portion or emergency portion on top of there and used it for a small workbench to work on the damn thing. I'm sure Earl and Earl Bryant and Bill Cleland and good many of those other boys done the same thing. And when we wasn't putting something on it, we was using it for a seat. I got these bolts loosened up to the point that I probably can cut them off. We'll stop and do that before I do any more paint, paint removing. Yes sir, we wiped them booger bears right off. Like I told you, I well, my friends, I'm going to tell you a railroad years. story before I, I also get out of here in the train day. yard and several other various jobs. But the years that I worked on the railroad truck, uh, the rip track, I learned a lot and worked with some pretty good old men. Today I'm going to tell you the story of Chunky Douglas. Chunky, I don't remember his real first name. We called him Chunky. Chunky was an old country boy from down around Wake, Wake Cross, Georgia. He began his railroad career back around, I don't know, in the, probably the 30s or the 40s. Working at a railroad that was later on bought out by the Southern Railroad. I don't remember what railroad it was. But old Chunky was country as you can get. I worked often quite a bit with him on track one. That's way to do this burning is just a little bit at a time. Uses less gas. Anyway, I worked with old Chunky several years on track one. Earl Bryant and Bill Cleveland. Many of you have never heard of them old boys, but 
Well, for example, I'm sure you've heard of Max Cleveland, the amputee war soldier that was with the VA and held several presidential appointments under Jimmy Carter. Anyway, Max Cleveland was Bill's nephew. Bill was a talker, but he's one I was telling you yesterday about laughing at me. But today's story is about Chunky Douglas. Chunky was an old country boy, and he was a worker. He would work his butt off. And he didn't have a whole lot of welding skills and stuff like that. When I worked with him, old Hugh Ivey come to me and say, Walter, anytime y'all need to weld something, you weld it. Chunky's welding ain't good enough. And he told Chunky, you don't weld nothing. If Chunky put something in there, it would fall out before it got off the rip track. We had to sit under these box cars and do air dates. And air dates where you replace the brake valves, the clean brake valves. You take the piston off, the brake piston off, and clean it out, put new grease in there, put it all back together. Well, I had pretty chunky, pretty well trained as far as me getting a better job. I do the valves on the air dates. And he would do the grease job. He didn't mind getting greasy and dirty at all. You know, sometimes I would do the grease job, but usually Chunky wound up with that detail. Chunky, like I say, Chunky was an old country boy. And he had some peculiar ways about him. He brought a lunchbox in with him every day. One of them old black regular lunchbox. We had 20 or 30 minutes for lunch every day. and. Chunky would always dig in his lunchbox. His wife hardly ever made him a sandwich. Uh, most of our wives would make us some sandwiches or something. Chunky would have a cans of Campbell soup in there or some beanie weenies or stuff like that. And he, he wore bib overalls. And he carried a tablespoon in the bib of his overalls. He'd whip out that old tablespoon, his pocket knife, cut the top out of that soup can, for example, if he was eating Campbell's soup, just eat it with a spoon right out of the can. Well, Chunky carried a picture in his wallet of his hog. He had a prize hog, whatever city they lived in when he was younger. Won all kind of ribbons and stuff at the fair. And you get it, we wanted to talk to get old Chunky started. We'd say, show him that picture of your hog, Chunky. He'd drag out his picture and show whoever it was we were talking to the picture of his hog. We had, we had to go to train direction, train derailments a lot. And quite often Chunky would go with me. I never let him drive. I always did the driving. He could drive quite well, but... I never was much of a passenger. I had to be the driver when I could be. We accused old Chunky of digging out the rocks and replacing with that spoon. Get your spoon out, Chunky. Dig them rocks out with that. Just anything to aggravate him. But he was easy going. You couldn't aggravate him for nothing. Chunky was a money miser, I guess. He, he, he held on to every penny he ever made. And that's probably why he didn't buy lunch meat. It was cheaper to buy some soup. I'll give you an example of... He left one time to go to somebody's funeral. Left the repair track, which was customary. They didn't mind if he left. Now, I don't know, he probably had to drive 20 or 30 miles to get to that funeral. But it was later on in the work day, and there was no more than one or two hours left to work on his shift, which was from 7 to 3. About 1 o'clock, Chunky was back. Are you going to the funeral? Oh, I don't mean to come back. He came back to work just for that two hours' pay. Uh, this part of the story of about Chunky, I don't know if I were to tell it or not. I guess I will. It's a little bit off color. 
Chunky came in late one day and I said, Chunky, I ain't never seen you come to work late. How come you late? Well, I woke up this morning and I'll tell this one another time. There's the wife. We'll pause this story until my wife and her friend go in the house. Well, it scrapes really good. Neither one of them likes to be on YouTube. They don't want me running the camera while they're around. Back to my story about Chunky. I asked him, Chunky, why are you late? Never have I seen you come in late. He said, well, I asked my wife for some favors this morning. And she said, no. I, oh, I kind of laughed. And then I said, hmm, there's a story here. Because <laughs> his wife, <laughs> she liked the money just as well as he did. So I finally said, uh, well, what happened? He said, I told her I wasn't going to work. I didn't get some favors. <laughs> I said, well, did you get some favors? He said, I'm here, ain't I? <laughs> I'll be damned. I don't know. I just, I never forgot that story old old Chunky. Uh, that'll be the end of my railroad story for today. We'll tell some more chunky stories or something sometime.